Hello and welcome back to my allotment. We're nearing the end of March and it's been a very busy and productive month so it's all getting a little bit exciting. The weather's been getting much drier this month. We've had a really good sort of sunny few spells this last week so it's been great to be on the plot and getting all of my beds prepared and ready for a new season. We did have a couple of frosts um, at night. The temperatures are still getting quite low. We've had a couple of nights where it reached minus two, minus three, um, and in daytime we've reached sort of 15 degrees. So it's been quite a severe change in temperatures, which is why I've still not really sown that much in my polytunnel because, you know, seeds won't germinate when the temperatures are fluctuating like that and they need a nice constant sort of temperature really. Um, so I'm still holding off and I've been making the most of the good weather to make sure all my beds are ready. I'm going to cover this bit really briefly, um, but the coronavirus is still going on. Um, the UK is on a bit of a lockdown right now for the next couple of weeks, but Michael Gove, the MP, said that we are okay to visit allotments and we've just got to make sure that we're keeping any locks and gates clean. I personally use um, disposable gloves as soon as I've unlocked them or locked them I take the gloves off but you can also use some spray to make sure that they're all clean and um, yeah social distancing so I don't really see anybody whilst I'm on my plot anyway but um, yeah we're still good to visit allotments thank god because <laughs> do I need it right now um, when I'm here it's like I'm in my own little bubble my own little world and I kind of forget about all that crazy stuff that's going on so um, that's that covered. So it's been a really busy couple of weeks for me. I've had some time off work anyway, so I've mulched all of my beds with compost as part of the no dig gardening method. I've built a new bed with rocks, dry stone rocks next to my dahlia border. I've built a bed out of um, scrap wood. And yeah, I've just, I've just been doing quite a bit on the plot. So you'll see that shortly. So yeah, as I said, I've still not really sewn too much. Uh, and I'm not worried because there is still plenty of time for all that but at home I do have some tomato plants that I've just sown and some all my chilies are still there as well um, but there's still so much time to sow guys don't panic don't worry that you're going to be behind because spring has only just begun I did receive a delivery an order a couple of weeks ago um, I thought I'd briefly show you some of the new dahlias that I've bought from Dare Raven so why have I bought more dahlias? Well, these ones are all the single variety of dahlia. So that means that they're not too showy. They don't have loads and loads of petals like those multiple layers. It's um, just a single ring of a flower. So it's much better for pollinators because they can access the pollen. Um, so these are all gonna go into my wildlife corner over there because in the latter part of the year, late summer going into autumn, there isn't that much colour in this area. Um, so I've got lots more flowers to pack it out and um, hopefully keep the pollinators happy right until the end of the season. So this one's called Totally Tangerine. I've gone for like a, an orangey peachy kind of mix. This one is Skipper's Bronze. Woo. Waltzing Matilda. I think this is the one that kind of changes colour. It goes from like a peachy yellow to like a blush uh, pinkish red kind of colour. Oh, and the last one was for me and it's Jowy or Joey Winnie. Um, I think that's another pom-pom variety because I really do love the pom-pom ones. I find they've got a much better vase life for when you cut and take them home. And um, yeah, I just love those big balls. They, um, they look fabulous. Now is actually the time to be planting up our dahlia tubers. I did do a video last April, I think. I can link it in the description below when I replanted some of my previously dug up tubers and I divided a few as well. Um, so I'll be potting these up over the next couple of weeks. I've also got a fig tree that should be arriving today. It's a standard fig tree. So that means it's on like one tall stick and then like a big 
ball at the top. Um, so hopefully I can sort of restrict the growth a little bit on that. And my plan is to plant it up into one of my small water tanks because figs like to have their roots constrained. So you can either put a special root sack around the roots to keep them constrained or put them in a pot. Um, so that's hopefully coming this afternoon. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to growing that on my plot this year. Well, looking outside, it's not as bright and sunny as it was this week. It's a little bit grey, quite breezy. Um, hopefully it's not going to rain <laughs> because it's time to go outside and update you all on all the things that I've been doing this month and show you around the plot. That's my gate there, but next door is a gate that's open <laughs> very rarely on a Saturday and it belongs to the Heritage Display Garden, which is part of St Anne's allotments here. Then it shows you about how they garden throughout the war times and hopefully we're going to have a tour around there with the volunteer at some point over this year. Um, but for now, let's go have a look inside my plot and see what's going on at the end of March. Well, it's looking a lot greener now. Those daffodils at the back are still in bloom. And we've also got some blossom on the damson tree in the corner. You can see right down to the city today. That's Nottingham down there. Now this is my old Victoria plum tree that died last year, sadly. Um, so what I've done over the last couple of days is actually take off a lot of this top growth. Um, I'm making it into like a bird feeding station because uh, I quite like the sculpture and the shape, the way it frames my shed and that view. So I didn't want to get rid of it and cut it down completely. I can always grow something up it as well, a climbing rose or some uh, something else but it's definitely staying here for now. And the birds are really enjoying it actually. Um, and as for the feeders, I've got this tube one is an anti-rodent bird feeder and I'm using the trays to help prevent, you know, it stops the seed from falling on the floor. Here in front, my magnolia is just about to burst, look. Over the next week or so, they'll be in bloom. I've bought another fruit tree or bush and this is, can you tell? Oh, the sun's coming out. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. <laughs> um, yes, I bought a dwarf mulberry bush and I think it's called Charlotte. I'll have to double check that. So it stays quite compact, unlike the tree, which traditionally gets really, really tall. And I've never eaten a mulberry before. Apparently they taste absolutely delicious. Um, unfortunately, we don't get them in the shops because they're so delicate to transport, softer than a raspberry. <laughs> so basically, because we cannot transport mulberries very well or store them, they don't have a good shelf life, we don't have them in the shops. So this is a really good crop to grow yourself. And um, yeah, I really hope I get some this year. Oh, so nice to have some sunshine. <laughs> now, looking down here, my strawberry patches, can you see? I've actually tidied them. <laughs> it's taken me so long, but I, you know, made an effort yesterday. I weeded them, spent a good little while getting all the brambles out. I did sort of abandon this patch last year because I didn't get any strawberries. I got a bit grumpy with it because the rodents took them all, despite my protective cages that have previously worked. Uh, so after I weeded them, I then mulched them with lots of peat-free compost. So that, that should hopefully keep the weeds at bay and it'll also feed the plants and um, yeah, provide them with some nutrients for this new growing year. Coming down, we've got lots of rhubarb coming. Look at all that. The jungle is growing. So I'll definitely be harvesting some of that over the next few weeks. This one's the early rhubarb. Look at it. I can do probably take a few stalks of that now to be honest. Well you know what? Why not? Be at home tomorrow, I can make a crumble. And remember you should always rip your rhubarb, do not cut it and then that will stimulate lots more new growth. The colour of that stem, beautiful. Let's get another one. So you want to hold it down at the base, get your thumb there, give it a wiggle and a tug 
there we go and look you can see the new shoot that's already going to come up perfect now my apple tree is already budding look at those flowers they'll be coming out soon i really hope that we don't get a frost when the flowers open because if that happens it damages the blossom and you won't get any apples so we do still have frost you know we could have frost over the next four weeks until the end of april really that's the end of our frost date but hopefully that won't happen still got a few daffodils down here a couple of tulips coming over at this end is where my autumn raspberries grow so i cut them back a while ago and all the new growth is now coming up this here is my gooseberry bush that i've got outside my shed at the moment it's in a pot and the new leaves are coming and look you can just see those pink flower buds forming as well this is so thorny that i is why i moved it into a pot and i've moved it down here to the bottom of my garden because it gets in the way and it's so painful if you get stuck on these <laughs> i do plan actually to donate this bush because i don't really eat the gooseberries i need to protect them from the birds really as well i think there's some robins nesting in the ivy down in that back corner because i keep seeing them and they love to visit the bird bath which is lovely to see this is the hardy blue geranium and that's coming back into life so many forget-me-nots are going to come out this area is going to be really blue over the next few weeks oh like that golden light is just glorious In fact, I think we're going to have a bit of blue sky for a while. So here's the plot view from the shed. Look what I've built. <laughs> it's my first handmade raised bed and it's really lame but I'm just so proud because my DIY skills are not that great so for me to do this by myself and it's you know it's pretty good it's quite even um, so yeah I'm quite proud of this and it's gonna stay here outside my shed I haven't fully decided what I'm gonna grow in it yet probably some vegetables or maybe some flowers for cutting and um, yeah I mean it's on stilts a little bit at the moment because it still needs tapping into the ground and I decided to use two planks to give it the extra height because this is the lower end of my allotment so I want to raise it up a little bit and also by having that extra depth the soil will retain the water much better so it's less likely to dry out but that does mean it's going to take quite a bit of compost and soil to fill uh, but I've got that already so fingers crossed in the next couple of weeks this will be filled and ready to go so behind the new raised bed, work has been underway on the area down at the bottom. All of this wood right here at the front is either wood that I'm going to be using or that I've actually removed from the back corner there. I know it's still a bit of a mess right now. I need to move the compost bin quite soon. Um, but I have removed one of these hazel shrubs because I have too many there. And I've got a big pile of soil that I've moved from somewhere else. But right down here I've actually cleared some of this out and um, just need to tidy that up and put a raised bed where that plank is. So there's quite a bit of ivy to tidy and hopefully the compost bin will be moving here in the next couple of weeks. It does look a bit of a mess with those compost bags there. I had a bulk delivery of peat-free compost in the week. So look, all of my beds are mulched with a nice thick layer. It looks really tidy when you've done that. <laughs> and um, So yeah, they're all ready for planting now, so it's quite exciting. Let's go have a look at the garlic. Well, it's taken them a while to get going, but they're finally going strong. I also grew some extra ones in modules as well so I've planted those out as well now especially now we've had a couple of frosts that should help them split that helps the clove divide into multiple little cloves 
Um, yeah, so all the other beds are empty now. Harvested all the remaining leeks. In front of the carrot bed, I've got my Welsh onion. This is a perennial plant, comes back every year. And I use it like spring onions, it's wonderful. And look at it, I've already got so much I can use. And there's some little flower buds forming. And I let these flower, the bees absolutely love them. And then they'll produce seed that I can sow because I would like to grow some more of this. I've kept the carrot bed covered for now and um, hopefully that'll help warm the soil and I'll be sowing some carrot seeds direct into there in the next few weeks. That's sunshine. Outside the shed, well, my raised bed is absolutely jam-packed with tulips and bulbs that are just ready to come out any time now. The rodent proofing has really worked and I'm so glad that I did it. And this is the water tank that I'm going to hopefully put that fig tree in once all of these bulbs have finished blooming. Just look at them. Can't wait for this to come out. Can't even remember what tulips they are now but it's going to be beautiful whatever they are. And then we come back to the seating area and I've got some more rocks down here now and um, yeah this is how it's looking right now. And well over here it's looking a little bit different with all of these new rocks. I got a lot more for cheap and I've decided to make use of the mound area, that big hill there at the top used to be covered in bindweed, it was a real problematic area which is why I had it smothered with wood chip for a few years but I've decided to pull all that back and I've made a new little bed attached to the raised border next to it where my dahlias grow and this is a Bulwell stone, it's a Nottingham stone they should match, unfortunately they need a bit more weathering because they're quite bright white at the moment but hopefully in time they will match the others I've still got lots more here at the front which I've made a bit of a temporary wall with for now but I'll be using them all around the allotment to edge some of my borders uh, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go into the polytunnel now because it's it's really quite breezy and cold out here. Oh look I can just see a dunnock on the bird station. Oh my hands are so cold. Well, it's not looking that busy in here yet. It's looking a little bit messy because I had my compost delivery and I wanted to throw a load down on this side. So I had to move everything around. My shallots are looking pretty good. I'll be planting them out in April next to my garlic. So that will be like an allium sort of bed. This is my potting table setup on my very wobbly pallet table. That was my first DIY project but it's still going strong despite the wobble. Um, so I've got some soil blocks here and what have I been sowing? Let's have a look. Lots of lettuce, so red solix, ruffled sole, uh, flashy butter oak, some spring onions and some chives. And this was using my soil blocker that I'm really enjoying. I mean look at that, it's a nice sturdy little block. I only sowed them a few days ago so they won't be germinating just yet. And over here I've re-sown some more broad beans because there was still time. I've chosen a different variety, a variety called Robin Hood because I live in Nottingham, I'm quite proud of Nottingham so I've, it's a dwarf like compact variety so it shouldn't grow too tall. And under here what have we got? Oh yes I re-sowed some sweet peas. Mystery isn't the name, <laughs> they're just um, some seeds I found that weren't in a packet with a name on it. And this one is Gwendoline, which is my favourite. It's like a soft pink with ruffled edges. It's a Spencer variety, which means it has a nice long stem and it's very, very fragrant, that one. And yeah, lots more sweet peas. I'm using this fleece to cover them to protect them from any rodents. But I've also sealed up a hole that I found in my polytunnel cover, which is probably where the rodents were getting in. So fingers crossed they survived this time. <laughs> I might need to set some traps otherwise. Um, yeah, okay, that's covered. So yeah, it's a little bit messy in here right now. Not too much going on. My tomato plants and chilies are at home 
and I'll be sowing lots more seeds over the coming weeks. It's all going to be systems go from now on. Oh yeah, and up here I've got two cherry trees and the buds on this are just about to burst. Look at that. So here we are, here's my plot at the end of March in 2020. So there you go, it's, um, it's all looking pretty good at the moment. I'm feeling really positive about how the plot is progressing. Um, I just hope that I can get this area done at the bottom before summertime. I almost forgot to give you guys your recommendation this month and this month it is a brand new book from Hugh Richards. This is his second book and it's called Grow Food for Free and he's very kindly sent me this and if you know me I do like to recycle, to reuse things and to pick things up for free and I think this book is just absolutely brilliant. I'm part way through reading it and I'll just show you guys what's inside. So it covers topics such as producing your own compost, sourcing seeds for free, how to grow perennials, setting up your veg patch, cheap solutions for raised beds and it's just a really well laid out book and it goes through all the details, all the things you need to know and I think it's just a brilliant book especially in the current climate with what's going on you know with the virus. I think a lot more people are now choosing to convert their gardens into vegetable gardens and you know people are a bit more worried about where their fresh food is going to come from, what's happening with the supply chain, the availability of food, so I think more people are going to be growing their own. So I think Growing Food for Free is just a brilliant book for beginner gardeners who are looking to do things um, on a bit of a budget but also it just inc includes so many great tips on ways that you can grow your own that you might not have thought about before. Next month it's going to be April and April is the month when everything just bursts into life. We're going to have cherry blossom, the forget-me-nots will be in bloom and my polytunnel is just going to be absolutely bursting with loads of seedlings, lots of crops that I'll be planting out so things really do get going in April. What else will I be doing? Well I might be direct sowing my first carrots, I'll be planting my potatoes, I'll be planting out some shallots and I also want to harvest the worm castings from my wormery and I've not really talked about it before but I do have a wormery and I've had it for a year now and I really want to use the actual compost, the worm castings that are made so I need to sort out my wormery and hopefully I'll be harvesting lots of rhubarb as well so it's going to be a very busy month, I hope you'll join me I might see you before then on some extra videos um, but until then I hope you are well um, look after yourself and I'll see you soon.